One moment, my brother. All right, Ross Moshe. So the I asked a question. It's Ross Moshe here and Ross Iadonis here. We just, just vibes and right here on a little pre-sabbatical here. It's a Friday Eve and we're just reasoning right here. And my brother asked me a question and I would like for him to kind of just basically, you know, basically get into a re-ask of it and let's take it from there. Yes, I. You, you have the... Yes, I. Yeah, the Shabbat is known as the, the day of rest. Uh, I was asking the eye, what, what, what do you do on a, what do you do on the Shabbat? How you enjoy the Shabbat? How you rest on the Shabbat? Okay, give thanks, give thanks, give thanks. Um, um, Toda, 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 give thanks, Tawada. You know, when speaking with the other Israelites, you know, there's different dialects. But basically, the answer to that question is rest. I know that's like, it, it, it's not like, you know, people say answering a question for question, but it's not really answering the question for question, it's answering the question of what is done on the Sabbath and basically rest. I'll say basically rest. And when I start to bring out to the brother, and we're going over some parts right here again, and hopefully maybe now or even at another time we can catch up because already getting into the Friday evening, you know, but basically rest, basically rest. Um where the problems or the confusions concerning sabbath comes in has more to do with like the new testament time what's called the new testament time or what we see in the bible the new testament time and for most christians or most people who are coming out of some form of um christianity especially some western gentile christianity there's a lot of confused ideas it all depends like if i'm speaking to somebody who who was or is a catholic they have a different kind of orientation to this than say somebody who's a Protestant, you know what I mean? And then if you're in right. one of the Protestant, um, the daughters, the daughters, as, as the Pope says, even the Protestant churches that broke away, they basically are, you know, the Roman Catholic daughters, right? There's a lot of confused ideas because when Christianity or the teaching gospel of Christ went into Europe, it became a very, um, controversial ethnic thing because of you know the romans on one hand who were part of the whole destruction of the temple and the crucifixion of the moshia yeshua and the group of people who are euphemistically called in genoa or general jews you know what i'm saying just with the ones the jews right. so there was a lot of persecution right of black jews or jews that were we could say for lack of a better word, but we'll use this term African or link with Ethiopian or black, right? To say what they call today black as opposed to white. You're just using these terms so you can get a good contextualization. When we say Jews, a lot of times one imagine those who came in in 740 AD, right? Talking about the European Ashkenazi Jews, their origins go to roughly 740 AD. So 740 AD, that is how many years after 70 AD? So there's a lot that went on within that time right there. But basically, when the Europeans or the European continent became more Christian or more Catholic initially, there was a lot of looking at the Jews, whether they were black or white or what have you, you know, Mediterranean or this or that. They looked at them to be um, the killers of Christ. This is what was preached by the church. So. Therefore, when they read the Bible and Yeshua, HaMoshiach, Adonai, HaAdon, the Lord, the master, the boss, Yeshua, when he burns out the religious doctrines, it was religious dogmatism that was going on. In fact, if you have a opportunity, I don't know whether you're able to right there, if you look up, anyone can probably look this up. Let me get the right name for it. It is the, the Jewish Sabbath, uh, what is the restrictions? There was something like 32 or something, 30, 30 something. I, I, I don't remember the, the exact number because I don't, you know, hold to that. And I know was what Yeshua was burning up and what for the most part is based on tradition. What is it, what is it called? Um, rules of Sabbath. Let me say rules of Sabbath Jewish. Let me just write this like this. Rules of Sabbath Jewish and see what comes up. Okay. And they have this yeah, rate. Have Huh? Different communities have their um, 
39. Yeah, certain things they do. Yeah, it's called the 39, the 39 Rules of Sabbath. So you can look that up. The 39 Rules of Sabbath. 39 categories of Sabbath work prohibited by law. Right? 39 rules. Now, these rules were the rules that were in effect as a kind of a custom or tradition back in the first century time. And these rules that were customs and traditions in the first century time, I'm talking about like around the time of the Bible, you know, like the, the so-called A.D. C.E. years and everything, later on became written down. So you had some traditions that were observed and done and were like recorded among the habits of the people that later on come into things that generally is called the Talmud. Talmud is a general word that means teaching. Yes, there's a Babylonian Talmud, but there's a Jerusalem Talmud, there's a Palestinian Talmud. Talmud, there's an Ethiopian Hebrew Talmud. Talmud is an operative word that means teaching. So yes, there are some, there are some aberrant and adverse things, teachings, or commentaries that you find in what they call a Babylonian Talmud. But then again, there's a lot of adverse things you find among different camps of Israelites today. We all of us as Israelites don't agree with the next camp, how they observe, you know, the worship of Yah or, you know, or, or Yahusha or Yeshua, even on the name, there's these differences. You see what I'm saying? So now imagine yes, if, if in the West, right, imagine we coming out of the West, we say we're Hebrews, Israelite, Beta Israel in the Americas. Right in the Caribbean, and we come out from here, but then we say, you know what? We want to take a stock of all the different Hebrews and Israelite camps. So we get a group of scholars together, or a group of one start to uh, um, make questions and go to the different camps. Like, say, uh, what does ISUPK think about this? What does G GMC? What does does the um, some of like the beta, the black Jews, the Orthodox Jewish community, black community think about this? What does Rastafari Yehudi think about this? There might be different Rastafari who acknowledge the, 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 the line of Judah, the Yehudi Judeo connection, but they might interpret some things different other than us. You know what I'm saying? One teacher says gives this interpretation of it. You know, looking at what the scripture says. Right. And the next teacher in another a camp or a synagogue or a congregation looks at it different. Even Christians are like this. If you look at many Christian communities, although they share a lot in common, the Bible, Jesus, you know, the Savior, Jesus Christ, you know, salvation, redemption, um, for forgiveness of sin. You know what I'm saying? They share these things in common. But then there are other differences between the Baptists, between the Protestant. I mean, the, 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 the Pentecostal, between the evangelical, between different evan evangelical churches differ. So what I'm trying to do by saying all of that is just give an overview of, for, for example, what's written in things called like the Talmud or particularly the Babylonian Talmud. Is it all bad? No, it's just a testimony of different ideas that different communities and different leading teachers you know uh, sages among the different communities had just as all of the hebrews or the israelites you know we're israel i would don't group the hebrew israelites phrase together as people do but you know what i'm talking about so among the different hebrew israelite or jewish or black communities that identify with being israelites or uh, hebrews or yehudi don't always agree on every point and doesn't mean that this group's point is wrong because they're looking at the scripture and trying to figure it out or the other community is wrong because it might seem as though there's a difference. I point that out to, to kind of just put that, that's a whole Babylonian Talmud. Is there any good? Maybe you have to do a reasonment on that. But I have before me right here, there's an article, 39 categories of Sabbath work prohibited by law. Now, this basically came out as a way of one's answering the same question that you asked, my brother. The question you asked, what do you do or how do you observe right, the Sabbath? First and foremostly, I observe it as a rest, as a rest time. But remember what I said earlier about the Sabbath? 
Well, the first thing we need to do right here, the first thing we need to do right here, just just quickly, trying to keep this maybe if you get an hour or so, we'll try to keep this within. We already began, so within you know this hour time or so, just as a good bite sized portion. I'm gonna look yes, up in yes, the sir. King James Bible. Give thanks, Brother Moshe. In the King James Bible, Sabbath. The first mention of the word Sabbath in the King James Bible. This is our basic from low degrees starting here exodus 16 23 it says exodus 16 23 and he said to them this is that which yahweh hath said tomorrow is the rest of the holy shabbat or sabbath la yahweh to jehovah bake that which y'all will bake today and seize that which y'all will seize and that which remaineth over lay up for you to be kept until the morning. All right. And then that's the first mention, right, of Sabbath as Sabbath in the English translation. Although the first mention in the Hebrew for Sabbath is in Genesis, Genesis chapter 2. See, when you go back to Genesis chapter 2, so now I have to put in the search if ones are using any of the King James Bible software searches. Uh, Genesis chapter uh, two, 2, verse 2. Genesis chapter 2. Yeah, the 2, verse 2, where it says, so when we look up Sabbath in the translation, King James Version, it takes us to Genesis, I mean, Exodus chapter 16. But when we understand that, as Yeshua said, Ye worship that which ye know not. We know what we worship for salvation is of the Yehudim. And Yeshua is and was a Yehudi. And Yehuda means to be praised, celebrated. It says in Genesis 2 and 2, Hebraically, it uses the word Shabbat underneath. So the word Sabbath, if you're reading it from a Hebrew perspective, we will come across Genesis 2 and 2 as the first mention of the sabbath or the shabbat in the hebrew bible so that's genesis 2 and 2 where it says and you, you have it brother yes i have it and on the seventh day god finished his work that he that he had made and he rested on the seventh day for all his work that he had made okay they, uh, there we go right there genesis bereshi yeah Ge bereshi Bereshith, Bereshith, Bereshit, Bereshith, Bereshith. You know, there are accents, and it doesn't mean that it's totally different what word we're saying, but there are different, you know, accents. I say that so that ones don't get overly dogmatic. You know, a lot of times we get, you know, like when it says, don't be over righteous, right? Why, you know, and don't be over wicked. You know, just try to do good. Uh, <laughs> but thank you, my brother, for so better. You know, Bereshith, we have um, on the seventh day, it says Elohim ended his work, which he had made. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had made. So this is the very first place. And then in the next verse, can you read the next verse? Verse three, Brother Moshe. And Elohim blessed the seventh. Yes, I. And Elohim blessed the seventh day and hallowed it. Because that is that in it he rests from all his work that Elohim and creating had made. Uh -huh. And creating had made. There you go, there you go. So so in these two verses, remember when we first looked up Sabbath, we went to Exodus sixteen, I think twenty something. And there's two verses back to back. Now that's Sabbath when you just look in the translation. But this is Sabbath from the Yeshua Ha'adon Robeno, from our rabbi, the rabbi of rabbis, Black Lord and Savior Yeshua HaMoshiach, that this is, this is the first place that the Hebrews or that the Yehudi, like Yeshua, would know and would point to. That's why when he was versing with them, he would say, is it not written? And he would quote from Torah. He would quote from the prophets. You know what I mean? in order to back up to give his point and our rabbi's interpretation the interpretation of interpretation the real context right so when you ask about what would i do 
right? And what do I seek to do? The main thing that I seek to do is to rest. And it might sound easier, right? When we say rest, it sounds easier than sometimes it actually is. You know what I'm saying? Like I remember one time somebody was talking, I was reading something about meditation and there was a lot of talk about certain types of meditation, right? And one thing in meditation, um, one technique in meditation is not to think, right? Because actually we as people, we overly think. That's what the Bible in a sense condemns thought and says the majority of thinking is evil. That's why Yeshua says in the translation, give no thought. Give no thought. <laughs> Give no thought to this. Give no thought to that. So one of the most challenging things in meditation, right? Right? Like, like in the in, in the inner aspect of meditation, right? Because the spiritual aspect should really be about breath, because breath is spirit. But in the inner aspect is to not think or to stop your overly thinking. There's a lot of chatter that goes on in the brain. Sometimes some of us might have experienced more or less. I could give a whole testimony of sometimes being overwhelmed, you know, like like decades ago sometimes. And it's not like negative thoughts or bad thoughts, but it's like almost like you can't stop your mind from 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 just, you know, running on. You know what I mean? It's like your computer is just doing things. Windows are opening up and going, closing up and things are playing. And it's like, that's not what you gave the command for. The command you're giving and what's happening, you know what I mean? On your laptop, you know, on your mind is not the same. So I point that out as a kind of a contrast right there that, that resting on the Sabbath is not generally speaking as easy coming out of the world as one would think. But to answer your question even a little bit more, right? Because I'm going I'm to tie this up. I'm going to tie this up. I'm going I'm to land, as people say. I'm going to land this plane. <laughs> right. If you're saying that later. You know? So when we go, we're going to return to Exodus chapter 16, verse 23 again. Because within the narrative, the translation, this is now the first place we have the word Sabbath which is a Hebrew word, Sabbath. And the Hebrew word Sabbath is the H7676. 7676. Shabbat, in this sense, is Sabbath, and then it has Day of Atonement, sabbatical year, week, produce, and sabbatical year. But then when we get to, when we get to Strong's definition, Strong's definition says it's intensive from the H7673. And that is the root of the word Sabbath, which is also enunciated as Shabbat. But the first Shabbat is a noun, and this is the verb. I just wanted people to point this out to one. So when you see the video, bro, you'll be able to see, you know, um, some of the search. I have the search on the screen. So this is the verb. So the noun is the H7676. The verb is the H7673. And the verb here means to cease, to desist, to rest. So from the Hebrew perspective, the Shabbat as a noun, like person, place, or thing, comes from the verb aspect. So when it says in Genesis 2 and 2 that he rested, this is what it uses. It's the verb, rested. Rest is an action. So rest, he Shabbat. He Shabbat. You know what I'm saying? In other words, we say keep the Sabbath, but the Sabbath, we have it as a noun, and the Sabbath, we have it as a verb. Um, let me see if I could bring in this brother right here. It's our brother, Ron Seymour. I got his, uh, hold on for a moment. My brother, my brother. The idea? Yes, I, you know, no, I'm in a reasonment right here with brother, um, brother Moshe. He asked me something about the Sabbath. I would like to, uh, oh man, no, I can't. Brother Moshe, are you still there? No, his, his things must, your thing must have, um, let me see, let me see, um, I, can, brother Moshe, are you there? Okay, it's because yeah, you can't have two of these things on at one time. Um, I like, but, um, 
Get him back on the line and then just link me in. Okay, 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 okay. Yes, sir, yes, sir. All this is live right now on the record. Yes, sir, yes, sir. A pre yes, Shabbat reasoning. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm I'm yes, sir. I'm 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 okay, Brother Moshe, you there? I'm here. Yeah. Okay, were you able to hear any of that? Were you able to hear no, anything? I didn't hear nothing. Okay, because what happened, the brother yeah. called, that was a chaplain. He had called on okay. the. Um, he called on the um, the phone line, right? And I kind of oh, okay. I kind of just wanted to bring him in on this, but we still have maybe about if if you if you if you got the time like about thirty to forty minutes. So what I'm gonna yeah. do is I'm gonna call you on your I'm gonna call you on the phone phone, not the WhatsApp. All right? Okay, you got it. You got the number. I got the number. Okay. Yes, sir. I got it. I see. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, yes, I'm a merge calls. Merging, merging. Yeah, merging calls. Are we all here? Yes, sir. No. Yes, yes. Greetings, greetings. We, we was just in, we was midway in a reason, man. I know the I probably have a reason, man. I'm just curious. Was the I's reason, man, about the Shabbat? <laughs> No, it was not about the Shabbat, but we could, um, you know, this is the pre-Shabbat time, so we write down schedule for, you know, Shabbat reasoning, you know, so. Yeah, because my brother, um, our brother Moshe, a.k.a. Ross Thomas, so it's interesting, we have a whole Thomas reasoning. You know, we tend to be fans of Thomas, and we don't like Thomas to be called the Doubting Thomas. We find it very unscriptural, unbiblical. People are adding um, on their ideas. You know how I tell you how the Bible says that most thought? Most thought is is evil. It seems like the Bible and translation when Yeshua says, "Give no thought," you know, like like it's like some kind of thinking, you know, what I mean? <laughs> is not good. So we like we like Brother Thomas in the scripts and everything, but you know, our but that's brother. Not really insane, no. Because even some of the most positive people before they say a positive thing and negative thing will come to their mind from diamond. I true, yeah, I true. You speak positive, you, know. you speak positive, but. Sometimes it's a redirect because the unspoken word was a negative. But you caught yourself and, and, and gave a sound of positivity. Mm -hmm. You know? And most people don't have that within them to catch themselves that quick. You know? Mm -hmm. So ones who, are, I would say, have a little more discipline in their liberty mm -hmm. would be able to transfer that negative thought into a positive speech. Because we get caught up in correction of speech. But if we stay with correction of speech, right? And speech is sound and vibration and frequency that causes certain reactions, emotions, and feelings among people. Once you put that sound out there, whatever feelings, emotions, and whatever happens because of that sound, you can't reverse that just sound. Yeah. But if you could correct your thought before you speak, which start is the first speech, mm. then a positive sound will be able to come out on a regular basis because you have learned to correct your thought before you speak. Yes, I. Uh -huh. And most who hold the Sabbath faithfully have that discipline because the Sabbath itself is a discipline. It is a high discipline, just like Rastafari, true Rastafari liberty is a discipline. When a man trod in this earth as a true Rasta man and his locks down past his knee going down there to his ankle and thing, and his precepts down by his belly and thing. This is a discipline a man has to take, you know. Not saying that all men who have long locks have a discipline, you know, but the true and faithful is a discipline that we take, you know. Mm. Because of this thing in our head, we... Like I said, you go places, like you don't go places you used to go, I go there no more, I do this no more. Mm. And it's not because... We don't like going there, or we don't like doing this. Mm -hmm. The reason we was doing it because we like it. Whether it was good or bad, we was doing it because we like it. Mm. We stopped doing it because of our discipline, not because you stop liking it. There's a lot of things as Rastafari mm. we still like. But mm. because of the discipline, mm. we stay away from these things. Mm. Now, with the Sabbath, you would have... You know, if you, I don't put this in the reason already, but in the Sabbath, you would have certain factions of religious people and, and theologians um, 
theologians, excuse my um, language, the theologians, theologians that will tell you they will quote certain things that these people have been quoting for a long time from the Vatican said that the Father, that you know, the Messiah came to, you know, to do away with the law. Well, this Sabbath thing is a perpetual thing. So, if it's perpetual, that means this is forever. Yeah. So, there's no way to say, well, this is done away with. This is something that's supposed to be done forever. Because mm. man was not made for the Sabbath. The Sabbath was made for man. A man just taking out the words right out of eye and eye mouth. Out of the mouth of Moshia, you know, we're taking the words out of his mouth. Yo, yo. <laughs> you know, so we hold to this thing faithfully. You know, I was not one that used to hold the Sabbath. I grew up in religion. Mm. And when I grew up, there was only one religion that held the Sabbath. That was the Seventh-day Adventists, and we used to think they were crazy. Mm. Because no other denomination was doing it. Only the Seventh-day Adventists were talking the That's Sabbath. That's a good point. When we good were point. The point you make. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I grew up in a big family, so I have multiple religions in my family. And only Seventh day Adventists was holding this thing. Now, I have to give the reason I'm holding the Sabbath. I have to give props to, you know, man, I, you know, Virgin I grew up with. You know, mm -hmm. I call, you know, I call, you know, some people don't like to call man boss and thing, but that is a humble you to check. Mm -hmm. I call a man boss. Mm -hmm. And is this man invite me and call me and tell me he and a brethren you now who done um, repatriate to Ethiopia as a musician was holding Sabbath and they invite me to the Sabbath. And ever since then, the vibes that I get from that, I have been holding the Sabbath ever since. Mm -hmm. And me and this same man don't hold some very serious Sabbath with Van Benjamin, where we start reasoning and the Bible and, and, and different things about the Sabbath. From before the sun go down and, and Friday like today, like how we reasoning right now, we start this reasoning and all we do is drink water and bun can, no eating, nothing. And we see the sun go down and then we see the sun come up Saturday morning and we can't believe. That the, that the sun rises on us, and this happened to us more than once. But we were hungry. It was just a straight reasoning. You know, granted man born much can, but you know how you know, we do it already. Mm, mm. You know? Well, so been... the Sabbath is something that I hold steadfast to, regardless of what anybody else is doing. I... I don't push the Sabbath and, and no one for them to hold the Sabbath. Uh -uh. I send out sabbatical greetings to, you know, to many people. I post sabbatical greetings and, and social and stuff, but I am not forcing nobody to go hold no Sabbath. I am sending you out a greetings and a blessing, hoping that you will see the value of the Sabbath mm. and take part in the Sabbath. So some people have different things they're dealing with that they do on the Sabbath and whatnot. That is beneficial to their liberty and their life, so they have to do these things based on what they're dealing with in their life. But I don't mean you can't take out an hour out of the time at the Sabbath and tell me praise the Lord for this hour you have take a break. Mm. Yes. How do we absorb the Sabbath for the whole period of the Sabbath? You know, we stay in the studies, we, you know, we stay in the scripture, we hold our meditation, and we try to solve that day for the most high. So we try to do everything possible in that particular time of the Sabbath to show the most that we show and faithful to this thing. We ain't just talking this thing. We doing this thing. Doing this thing. You know, regardless if somebody are wrong you or not. And this is the key thing. Can you hold the Sabbath by yourself? Do you need other people? If mm. nobody else are wrong, are you going to hold it? Mm. <laughs> are, you, you know? are, you, are you going to do it for 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 what people are seeing? Because are you gonna do it because people are looking, or are you gonna do it even when people are not looking? In other words, right, right, right. you know, exactly to please because people. Mm -hmm. The most important one is looking, and that's the most. Yeah, uh, always looking. Mm -hmm. yeah. The brother coming with some fire. He come with some sabbatical, sabbatical fire. <laughs> yeah, man, this Sabbath is a serious thing because remember, or no? They said the Sabbath was made for the man, right? 
the brother taking all the key uh, points. Go, go, go with it, man. Go, go through. <laughs> but the land, the land itself, I don't forget the Sabbath. Because anybody who who understands the Sabbath and study the scriptures and farm and no farming, they know on the seventh year you don't touch the land. Uh, so that's a Sabbath for the, for the earth and the land itself. So you have an acre of land that you don't farm. And six years you farm and reap, but after seven years you ain't supposed to touch it enough. You, yes, the owner of the land, is not supposed to touch it. Now, me who don't own the land, I have nothing to do with this land. If I park in your land and I see man going your land, I can go and your land and eat that land. No. Because seventh year or not. The only thing you can't do... You who own the land can't touch it. No, 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 no. The only thing one can't do, one can't do is like, is like, um, like, for example, the owner of the land, you're right, the owner of the land cannot, like, once he reap it, like, from the year before, he left it. So it's just whatever grow, whatever grow, right? Yeah. He can, you know, one can take, and a stranger can come through and pick thing and take. The only thing a stranger can do is come bring a basket. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? You, you, you know, you know, like you have a nice, a nice mango tree. I come to Ross Seymour's gates with a big basket, a big wicker basket. <laughs> I'm sure I throw mango in there, and yeah, man say you can't do that. I say it's it's a sabbatical year. Just said I can't just take your thing. <laughs> no, 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 you, you get you freely. And it reminds us of the garden. I just have to say that right there. When the I mentioned that, it reminded me of the garden. You remember with the garden, like to eat freely of all the yeah. other trees. You know, you could just eat freely. He to eat yeah. freely. Check this out. Check this out, my brother. Cause the eyes on 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 quick fire, and this is really good because ones and ones who check out this vlog, cause we like in a record. When the brother asks, I we just reason it. But as I started to see the path that Yah was lighting up, I said, yo, we have to like light up a reasonment on this right here, you know, and was the key thing. The brother's question was, how do I observe? He was asking his brother, the brother, like, how do I observe like the Sabbath? What do I do? And so my first answer, my main answer is that I rest, that, uh, you know, that I rest. And then after that, I didn't even share this before, so people are gonna be hearing this first rate prior here at this in this reason, man, um, is that um when we read what is written, right, according to the law, as Yeshua said, as Ha Adon, Ha Adon, Adon is like Lord Ha is the Ha Adon, the Lord Yeshua, you the boss, as my brother said, the boss, you know what I mean? The boss. You know, as he said, what is what is written when he reproved the Pharisees and the scribes? Because back in them days, they had like 39. You can look it up. Um, 39 It's called 39 Sabbath laws, like 39 categories of Sabbath work. Because back in the early days, even when we, the black Jews, were Jews, you know what I mean? And even when the white people came in and other people came in, they came in kind of seeing what other people do. Like when people come into reggae or Rasta, they see, well, what the people before them who are into Rastafari or reggae, you know what I mean? Do, and they basically pick up and they might do the same thing and they might add in their own innovations. I just want to show people how these things come down to today. So what we have written called the 39 categories of Sabbath work that are prohibited by law or by Torah were things that were being customarily done in the Bible time, in the New Testament, in the Gospels, where Yeshua is going back and forth with the other rabbis on this particular subject matter. And what Yeshua was saying was that y'all have, have made the law of Yah, what Yah actually said and what he spoke with his own mouth, especially in Exodus chapter 20, of no, of no, of no value, of no force. Because what they what had happened was that people asked, what is work? Because that brings me to the second part of the Sabbath. Or really the first part of the Sabbath. The first part of the Sabbath is six days you shall work and do all your labor. And for many years, I want to say many years, I, I don't know the exact time period. It was a moment where I was seeking to keep the Sabbath, right? Because it was written and those who testified gave good testimony. But I was having certain difficulties. The Sabbath was still an improvement, but I recognized I wasn't really in the fullness. Like my wings were not fully, you know, like when a bird fully stretches out its wings, it was not fully stretched out. You know what I mean? I was not, I was not in good f full flight. And I had to go back. The Holy Spirit sent me back to what was written. 
It's a what is written because those words of Yeshua, they resonate. What is written? Right. What is written? What is written is six days you shall work and do all your labor. And then I understood the key because what happens is that some people hear about the Sabbath, hear about the spiritual, religious, holy, you know, all of that. That's good. Right. And they say, I want to get this goodness. I, like I want to get the blessing. Right. But they don't recognize what the work is. See, the work for the Sabbath actually is those six days of work. And as I focus on making the six days or at least the five or so days more productive, you know, what I mean, and doing things and actually working, you know, doing some form of work, whether working for somebody else or doing some work. I'm going to take care of this today, tomorrow, so forth and so on, just like if I was working for somebody else. Boom, 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 boom. And then when the Sabbath comes, that Sabbath comes as a rest, a relief. You know what I'm saying? This is why it's so important. People like I have on the screen right here um, this quote from from the Bible. What is this right here? Exodus chapter 20, verse eight, where it says, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. That's what most of us will quote. Like the brother said, he just give out, Rossimo, you say you just give out sabbatical greetings. You're not giving out commandment. You know what I mean? In that sense. I mean, even if we say, remember the Sabbath day, we're just, we're just singing the song of, of Yah's words, you know, right there. But some are very dogmatic saying, keep, you know, like you hear people say two words. They say, keep the Sabbath, right? You hear people say, keep the Sabbath day, which is written, right? Or keep it, right? Or guard it and remember it. Two words are used. The first word here of the commandment for the covenant for Israel, for John's people is to remember. And what does remember cost? What does remember cost? I mean, what you have to do, remember doesn't cost anything in this world. Remember is a spiritual act. It's a psycho, psychological, spiritual, a psycho, spiritual act. Remembering. It has to do with the mind. Remembering the Sabbath. But notice how it's easy to remember the Sabbath, the rest day, by looking at what Yah said. Yah said, six days you shall what? Work and do all of your labor. And then it says, and everybody say, and, <laughs> and the Sabbath or the rest day before the eye call forward, we were going into the word Sabbath. When we looked up Sabbath first time, like just looking at the King James Bible, just according to translation from low degrees to high degrees, the first place we have Sabbath in the uh, translation of the Bible is in Exodus sixteen twenty three. Right. And this is interesting because from a Hebrew perspective, looking at the language, the African Shemitic language, the first place that we find Shabbat is not as the noun, the noun person, place or thing, a noun in Exodus 16, 23, but it is in Genesis 2 and 2. That's why I want to point this out to the eye so the eye can kind of um, also catch up on the reasonment, even though the eye basically yeah, already days. prophesied. Yeah, now, what the eye said is like a prophecy. The eye already kind of showed the, the, the fullness of the reason. In other words, we were still building on the basic, on the basic um, architectural design plan, right? <laughs> and then the brother came in and said, and this is what it should look like. <laughs> so we're still doing a, just a little more building right here, a little more building. Let, let me ask a question. If it's already built, right? If it's already built, why do they call it a building? <laughs> nah, yeah, yeah. English language boy, you're telling you. No, no, no. But anyway, anyway, that's just a that's just to show how language is. So what the brother mentioned and what we just mentioned, Genesis two and two. When it says and he rested, it uses the word Shabbat. The root word is the verb. The root of the word is the verb. He Shabbat. But it doesn't say he Shabbat. In English, it says he rested. So that gives us the key that Sabbath, Shabbat is rest. If you look up the word Sabbath in like the Strong's Concordance, it's the H7676. If you look at what part of speech it is, it is a noun. But then if you look at the Strong's definition, it says this is the intensive form that's from the verb, the H7673. And when we go there, it's the same word, Shabbat. Right? The same word Shabbat, but of course it's context. As a Hebrew speaker and studier, we know that this is the verb. And the verb means, guess what the verb means? The BDB brings it out as to cease, to desist, to rest. When we get into the root of the word, I want to bring this out. It means to cease, 
to cease, like cease fire, cease, cease and desist, right? To rest. But the context of it from Yah in the beginning, right, is from work. It means to cease, but in another, in a more intensive sense, the same verb can be brought out in other words that means to cause to cease, to put an end to. The word also can mean to destroy, to exterminate. But it's not the usual word like we're going to destroy something or something got destroyed. But it's, a, it's bringing out the root sense to cease, to cease and desist, to cease from rest. In another sense of the verb, the Hebrew verb Shabbat can mean to destroy. In a sense, think about it for or cause to fail. It can also mean to cause to fail. Now think about it. people say, I heard some people say, you know, Sabbath mean to, to destroy, to exterminate. And people are like, oh, what my, oh my God. But because people don't know Hebrew or know, understand the connections, they don't understand that hey, that's what you do in a sense with your work. On the Sabbath day, you cause it to fail. You cause it to cease, to, to, to destroy, because you're ceasing it. And in another way of interpretation, it can mean to, to, to cease something is to destroy it, to stop that activity. To cause that activity to fail, but in the sense that we're talking about here from the Torah, is to keep or observe the rest. Imagine if we say, keep the rest. Now, of course, we rest every, you know, people say we rest every, no, well, not really every day, because we rest every day, then we're not working in a day. Think about it for a moment. <laughs> we rest every evening. See, the difference is, see, people don't look at this. The difference is, it says, keep the Sabbath day. People ask, why do Yehudi and Jews and Torah observant folk, why do they prepare for the Sabbath day, the Shabbat day, right, on the Friday evening? Why do Yeshua and all of them understand that was the order, right? I want to say something, but I need to, but, 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 but I need to go somewhere first before I say what I want to say. Okay, where, um, where you want to go? Keep, when they say keep the Sabbath holy, can you break that down? Keep the Sabbath holy. Okay. Oh, so I can say what I want to say. Okay. 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 Let me just do this here. And people are watching on the screen. I'm gonna put the word "keep." I have Sabbath as a search word. I put "keep Sabbath," and "keep Sabbath," um, "keep Sabbath." You find that in Exodus 31 and 14. In Exodus 31, in the 10 words, it says, "Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy." But here in Exodus 31, 14, it reads, y'all shall keep the Sabbath day, therefore, for it is holy to you. Everyone that defileth it shall surely be put to death for whosoever doeth any work therein. That soul, this is what's so very interesting. It says that soul, that soul, and the soul is feminine in man and woman. The soul in Hebrews, that soul shall be cut off. Notice what it says, cut off. From among, it says his people, but in Hebrew it would read, that soul shall be cut off from her people. So if a man do it, that soul in him, which is her, shall be cut off from his people. So the keep word, just I'm, I'm going to get out of this right here, I'm going to land, is the H8104. It's the Hebrew word shamar, shamar. Shamar means to, to keep, to guard, to give heed. But if you get to the root of it, break it down to the root, it means to hedge about as with thorns. So if you have a garden, like say if you have a garden, some precious flowers or herbs or whatever, and you put some thorns or a little fence around it, that's the inner sense of what shamar, the word to guard or to keep something, is to put a hedge about it. Come in. Yes, I. Yes, I. Now, this is, why I'm about to say is mine is how I interpret and view certain things about the Sabbath. And these two things we're talking about, which is the holy, which is set apart. And then you see the Shabbat, which is basically cease, desist, stop, basically stop. Right, to so, stop everything to rest, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, in my liberty, what I use them things for when I got more educated, uh, wisened up on certain things through listening to certain ones who are more advanced in the studies than you are, so you learn from certain people. And I, Rafael Adonis is, you know, a teacher for I and I. When I learn these things, I start to look at these things different and go inside myself for a medi, within myself, within my temple, and deal with the most high within my temple to see how I could properly use this Sabbath 
to benefit me in the long run. And when I say the long run, I'm talking about this gift of eternal life. Now, mm-hmm. set apart and cease to do, to stop, to, to, you know, to rest. Now, these things, when you do these two things, in my irritation, I look at it like these are things that is helping me to not be worldly. Mm. To, 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 to set apart myself, be holy, set apart myself from the wall itself. Cease to deal with the wall on the Sabbath. Mm. So I set myself apart from the wall and cease to deal with it. No. Mm. By able to do this, and Sabbath after Sabbath is strength after strength. You have six more days in the week or in the strong, like we call it. That's mm. the strength. Mm. I use the Sabbath to benefit me in those six days where I have to be inside of this wall and deal with this wall. Mm. Mm. This is my strength. Because on the Sabbath, I set apart myself from the wall and I cease to deal with it. I deal with the most high, me and the most high. If you inter- if, if, if your conversation or uh, what you are presenting is not something to do with what the most high is, is ordained on this day, I don't want nothing to do with you right now. No. Mm. If I have to turn on something on the Sabbath, on the TV, on the YouTube, it got to be somebody who is holding a holy, convers- holy congregation today mm. on the Sabbath day. Speaking the large word. That's interesting. That's the brother main. I will listen to that. Mm-hmm. So if you so if ones are ones are somebody who will be speaking the large word and the Shabbat and you have a platform out there, YouTube or whatever, I don't mind taking that in because you are doing the large work. This is the Shabbat set apart. This is what I am talking about. Mm. So we're not just holding the Sabbath just to hold the Sabbath because the books are holding the Sabbath. It's a reason and a, a whole irritation and a whole liberty behind this thing. True, true, so true. So this is how I deal with this. So I just wanted the people them to hear how I personally with the Sabbath, how I take it. Yeah. I ain't saying that that's what the scripture says. I tell you how when I go inside of myself in my temple, I reason with the most high. This is what I get. Uh, 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 but I would say that's you. You are saying that what what the I receive in the spirit and the truth is what the scripture is saying that the I receive and just sharing that. And that's why I was talking about with the different Talmud. Talmud was the operative word that means teaching. And why the Babylonian Talmud seems so weird out is because certain parts that have been, you know, translated or even mistranslated and put out there represent certain views from Yehudi, our people who are living in Babylon, like we're in Babylon, like all of the Rastafari groups don't always absolutely agree on every single point, even though we may share a general agreement overall as Rastafari. You know what I mean? Same thing with a lot of our community. If you went to the one one group, right? One Israelite group might say this and and disagree on that. But what you presented was a point of view that I would even say, when you say that, well, it's not you saying what the Bible says, but I would say it is what the Bible says, but the eyes, it, it's through the filter of the eyes own experience. And I thank you for sharing that, you know, because it shows how we have to chew on the word. You know, we have to make sense, as people say, make sense. You know what I mean? Make sense out of this. You know, so when the brother asks, what does keep mean? I have on the screen back again, Exodus 20 and 8 still, where it says, remember the Sabbath. Right? What does remember mean? You know, what's the act of remember? Right? Remember the Sabbath day. Here it uses the words to keep it, to guard it, to hedge it about as being set apart. To guard it, to keep it. You know what I mean? In other words... There is an effort to keep that set apart opportunity, right? To be one with the Most High and to keep that covenant because it's a witness. It's a he says it's an eternal witness. Yeshua never said that one should not keep the Sabbath. He never said don't remember the Sabbath. What he said was that these these extra rules and regulations that may have been intended to help people, you know what I mean? Was not what was said. For example. There's, there's all these things that say, what is work? So they made a whole list based on reasoning, you know, mind of mind reasoning, and then people writing down the reasoning. Like if you carry anything, they said, don't carry nothing. Cause if you carry anything, it's like working. 
You know what I mean? So some people would be in the house and if they have to carry this from this area to that area because of what some of the religious teachers, the doctrine that they was teaching, they would not carry to, to, to burn anything, to, to write anything, to cook anything, to sew anything. So when you look at the 39 Sabbath um, 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 prohibitions of work, that's what Yeshua was de debating and rebuking them on then. Back then, in the Bible time, it wasn't written down as it became written down more later. Some things was written, but it wasn't fully compiled. So what we see in Judaism today with the 39 categories of Sabbath work, I say, like Yeshua, our rabbi would say, that's extra. That's extra. That's not what you should focus on. I think it's good for us to sit down and maybe just reason on it because some things we we'll agree on. Some things we we'll agree on. You know what I mean? Like if I'm carrying some, like I usually work and, 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 I, and my usual work, I do this on regular days. And then I carry this all the way over to my brother across town. Not because he's dying, not because he's in a desperate situation, just because he wants it. Maybe that's work because I'm doing the same work I do normally. And it's not, in other words, we can violate almost any commandment. And this is from the, the sages almost any commandment, I know it doesn't sound wild to people, but, but hear me out, if it is to save life. And that, that rule, that regulation was, under, I say rule and regulation because it was those who did what we're doing here, reasoning on the scripts, and I say what the brother said right there is right. You know, and, and I co-sign that and I back it up with scripture and everything, right? You know, now somebody can take that and, 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 and exaggerate it. You know what I mean? Because they want to be really super holy. That's why it says, why be over-righteous or over-wicked? You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, there's no need to be over-righteous or over-wicked. That's what Yeshua was saying to them. Yeshua was saying, l l listen, he was walking through the cornfield for the disciples, and the disciples were, were taking fresh corn and just eating it while they, you know, while they were going through the field. The other religious rabbis, the rabbis, because he's a rabbi, he's a teacher, you know, said pastor, preacher, as, as it will be today in these terms. As they saw it, what his disciples were doing, they said, oh, whoa, 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 he's violating because they had sat down amongst themselves and were reasoning on Torah and coming to a decision on different reasoning from different mind and mind. And then they started to look at what the mind and mind said as being first. Let's keep to what every mind of mind has said and not comparing what mind of mind has said with what the Spirit says to them about the Word. You understand? Mind of mind reasoning could be good in the reasonment, but that don't mean that now I have to forget what Yah said. That's why Yeshua said, your, your rules, your customs have made the law, the Torah, right, of no force, like, 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 like has been validated, the Torah. You, you know what I'm saying? So, so the, the whole idea of sabbath is basic rest is basic rest but then on to get into that true rest right one has to keep the the, the fullness of the the fourth commandment it's actually the fourth commandment right um i think in the in the in the in the protestants they call it the third because they get confused about the numbering of the commandments it's the fourth commandment and and, and let's just go here for one moment can anybody get to um um exodus chapter Exodus chapter um, 20. Exodus chapter 20. Okay, go to uh, verse, uh, what verse What verse are we in right here? Let's go to verse, um, um, not verse, verse 8 is the epicenter. Verse 8 is the epis, is the beginning, yeah, the beginning. Go verse 8, verse 8 to verse um, 11. So verse 8 to verse 11 is the fourth word because there's 10 words here and these 10 words according to the scripts the yah yahweh spoke the father spoke with his own voice and remember after he spoke these words the people near the end of the chapter they were afraid to go into the thick cloud you know they, they were afraid to go into the darkness the cloud where moses was going in they fell back they said they told moses we can't hear no more of this because we hear the father's voice elohim's voice speak we die and so this is when they said to Moses, you be our mediator. Let Yah speak to you and whatever he tells you to do, right, we will do and all of that. You know what I'm saying? So I just point that out because the interesting context of these 10 words were, were very heavy. This is the first and the main thing they were given. This here is pure law. 
right? This this here is pure law. This is the I'll say this is the purest part of the scripture, but it did not have fulfillment until Yeshua. And fulfillment means that it's pure words because the Father spoke these words and these words alone, according to the scripture, with his own voice, and all the people heard. Right? But when all the people heard his voice, they pleaded that he would speak no more, the thunders, the lightnings, and everything. Right? You know, and they could not enter into the thick darkness where Moses was going to commune. And they asked Moses to be their intermediary. Right? It has fulfillment because Yeshua fulfilled this. If you if, if you know what I'm saying, Yeshua fulfilled all of these ten words. Right? Kept to all of these ten words. You know what I mean? Part of it half of it deals with our relationship, our vertical relationship as man to the almighty and the other half of the 10 words deals with our horizontal relationship one to another when we put these two lines together we have the plus sign the true cross but can you read my brother from verse 8 to 11 just for a moment Moshe uh, remember the Shabbat day to keep it holy six days shall thou leave and do all thy work but on the seventh day is the Sabbath Shabbat, Shabbat, oh, Hashem, the Elohim, in it, thou shalt do, thou shalt not do any work. Thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thou maid servant, nor thy ma the maid servant, man servant, nor thy maid servant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger, that is within thy gates. Keep going. Yeah, yeah, just, just 11. 11 is the last. For in the six days, Hashem made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, is in rest the seventh day. Wherefore, Hashem blessed the, Sh the Shabbat day and hallowed it, and hallowed it. And set it apart, and set it apart. Now and notice, that's the case with you. Yeah, but notice how it doves back to the first mention of Shabbat that doesn't come out in the translation. But it does link how scripture explains scripture. So any brethren or ones and ones reasoning on scripture, seeing this here in verse 11 and then linking it with Genesis 2 and 2 is a right link. In Hebrew, it becomes very easy because you start to see similar words, the same words, and you start to make word association. But you can see even in the giving of it in the translation here, it's right and accurate because it gives the reasoning. The four in six days, Hashem or the name, the name made the heaven. That the name that's above every name made the heavens and earth and the sea and all that is in that in them is and rested and rested means that he ceased from the active activity of creation because some people say well the, the almighty you see heaven and earth and everything keeps going on and that must be because the almighty is still working they misunderstand what work is in other words what work is it's like almost like you make a something you make a generator and when you finish making a generator, it's working. That means it's working all every day. You don't have to do nothing else to the generator. You see what I'm saying? You don't have to work and make another generator. You created a generator and the generator is continually going on in its operation. Same thing with the heavens. Same thing with the earth. You know, the almighty, of course, is his creation. So he can, you know, you know, tweak it whenever he want to tweak it. Whenever he feels it's necessary, he can do what he please. But... He did no more work. I heard people say that, well, 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 every day is my Sabbath day. But think about what we're saying here. Yeshua said, know ye not that there are 12 hours in the day? 12 hours a day. The Shabbat day is from the dawning until the, you could say, until the evening. You know, that is the day. Notice every other let's day. To, um, okay, let's go back to um, verse 10 for a second. Yes, sir. We're at verse 10. We're there. Yeah, we go back to verse 10 for a second, right? I wonder if the brother uh, going to say what I think he's going to say. Go ahead. <laughs> well, we're down the same way sometimes, so you yes, never I. know what I'm going to read it again just so it's okay to get into thing. But okay. the seventh day is the Shabbat of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou nor thy son nor thy daughter, thy manservant, or thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within 
Like it. Yeah, what's missing? No. <laughs> Who was not mentioned? What's missing? Yeah. The wife. Speaker. Ah. The, uh, the wife. And see, this brings out another interesting Yehudi and ancient, even the black Jews. We first reason on these things, but many faithful Jews who are not black also hold to this right here. That most of the commandments in, in the Torah, and even in scripture generally, but most of the commandments are, are for mind. Like mind, we have to be reminded, we have to be commanded. And therefore, women were exempted from time-orientated um, commands. Women are exempted. In other words, there are time oriented things like times of worship three times in a year where we as the men, we have to show up. It's an appointment. We got to be there unless we sick or something else going on. Then that's, of course, an exemption. Right. And the physician knows, you know what I'm saying? But we have to show up. But for women, like, for example, for keeping the holy days, it's commanded on all of the sons, the men of Israel. The woman can participate. But if they cannot, it's no it's no sin on them necessarily. You know what I mean? Because the woman, I can't say, it means a woman's work. Some will say a woman's work is never done. I, I give that to y'all. <laughs> but it exempts the woman. The eye picked up on it. The eye picked up on it. Thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter. So the daughter, so it's not, it's not exempting the feminine, generally speaking. No. But specifically, it's, it's, it's in a sense, it's exempting the wife. In a sense. Because remember, the two shall be what? Well, in the beginning, the two are what? One. 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 You know what I mean? But, for example, for example, it's Sabbath time or it's a holiday time. And my wife, say, my woman is, say, unclean. or You know what I mean? Or she's, you know, what, however it may be. Right? She don't want to walk up in there. I might not go into the holy place if I'm unclean in the same sense as most of the unclean regulations were to men. Men can have 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 issues. They can have issues. You know, they can have some 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 liquid, you know, where it should not be. And therefore they cannot enter into the holy courts either. You know what I'm saying? But it does exempt wife. What's the I gonna reason on the wife? What's the I take on that, my brother? Pray to I. What, what, you, you were thinking when I was thinking. You was, was on the same wavelength. We was on the same. I was on your wavelength, man. I figured you know where I was going. You know. That's look, why I waited. I was because I because I wanted to put this in before, but I wanted to wait for a proper time mm, to bring it in. Mm. So when you went, when you went, just know that's why I caught you where I caught you and put it in because I think it was the proper time. It's time. It's time. Hebrew boy, everything take time. Time, it's time. Call time. The but, man serving the is, and the maid serving. With the wife, mm -hmm. like you said, like, like, like you said with the wife, there's a narrative that a woman's work is never done. There's some truth you know? to that, I guess. There's some truth to that. Yeah. Yeah. I, so I can't deny it. <laughs> with, with, with all she has to deal with, I could see part of why, but there's a something I want to. You know, to present to you because let me know if this is factual or not, if it's true or not, mm. as far as scripturally goes. I have heard, and I have heard this in certain reasonings, and it kind of makes sense to me. But I don't really speak it because I don't know how factual it is, right? But okay, we'll, we'll get a, 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 re, a, like a, a, a reason on this, and a, you know, like a fact quote on this right now. It is said in some circles of reasoning that a faithful woman to the most high cannot save her husband, but a faithful husband to the most high can save his wife. Is that true? Mm, no, not not according to, to Rabbi Shaul. I say Rabbi Shaul because that's what he was, but then he took on a new title. In the Nazarene ministry, he became the apostle. Even he said he magnified his office to the Gentiles. Talking about Paul. Paul says, he speaks about, um, I think it's in Corinthians. Um, he speaks about, um, like, okay, say say one of the two, man or the woman, or the woman or the man, um, cites the truth. Right? They cite the truth. And they come to the truth, to Christ. Right? But say the wife doesn't. You know, let me find that area. The wife doesn't. And so the sometime a man might be like, well, he has to find maybe another wife 
or even a woman might say she has to find another husband because her husband don't check for Christ or don't check for Messiah. You know, um, you know, um, yeah. Uh, hold on for a moment. Let me let me find this verse right here. I won't find the verse because Paul, even in the translation, brings out boom. Here we go. It's First Corinthians, my brother. Um, First Corinthians seven and um, I have seven sixteen, but the section begins right about here about could you ask whether um um i'll begin from verse 12 getting into verse like uh first corinthians chapter 7 let's begin at verse 12 yeah 7 7 12 um first corinthians new testament but to the rest speak i this is this is paul here and paul in a lot of senses even in the new testament when you understand the pattern he is just like a Yehudi or a Jewish rabbi, even a black Jewish rabbi, like like in the sense of there's a certain order. Yeshua recognized that there were certain things that the rabbis, other rabbis and Pharisees, he said that salvation is of the Jews. He said to the Pharisees and the scribes, he said, y'all have the keys of the kingdom, but y'all don't enter in and y'all prevent anyone who want to enter in from entering in. So we can clearly see that Yeshua was not dismissing the truth in the Yehudi way. But he said that the teachers, the leaders, the, the religious leaders had gotten like wardens, you know what I'm saying? For the people, basically. But he says, but to the rest, speak I, not ha I don't, not the Lord, not Yahweh. Because in some areas he basically understood Torah and was able to communicate what he could discern through the Holy Spirit was true. But now he's just now given his reasoning. So it's almost like me saying, well, this is scripture. But then you ask me a question that is not a direct scriptural answer, but I can discern from the scripture a good answer. But it's basically I, not the Lord, not Yahweh. He says, if any brother hath a wife that believeth not, and she be pleased to dwell with him, let him not put her away. So what it's saying right here is kind of obvious that a man may have an Isha, an Eshet, like a woman who doesn't amen, who doesn't credit. Like, say, in Yeshua and in, in Yahuwah in the way, you know, the Nazarene way. And she please and she be pleased to dwell with him because, you know, like he could change his spirituality that some would call religion. But we deal with spirituality in Yeshua and the almighty and his woman's on a different spirit. She's not going to be pleased to dwell. So she's going to put herself away. She's going to go. She's going to go apart. Right. That's different. He explains that. But he says right here, let him not put her away because some mind of mine would reason as some of the Jews would reason going back to Moses and divorce his wife and give her a bill of divorcement. Remember what Robain or Yeshua, our rabbi Yeshua said, he said, Moses wrote those things because of the hardness of your heart. Why did, he, why did Yeshua say Moses wrote those things? Because not everything in Hot Torah, right? It takes discernment, reading comprehension. And the Yehudi and Yeshua even understood that. That's why he said it and nobody said nothing to him because they understood that that's true. That Moses, this is advisement that Moses was allowed to give so that people could keep the 10 words, the 10 commandments. Basically, it was the 10 words, the 10 commandments. That's it. But all the rest, as we say, is commentary. All the rest is commentary. You know, it might be if it is when you go abroad or if such and such is giving you case study. All the rest is like case study. You know, what I mean, you know how people are. What do you mean? Thou shall not murder. Well, if you hate your brother. Right. And the two you're going to feel and your axe head go off and knock him in the head. If you express that hate and people know that hate, it's like you killed your brother because hatred leads to murder. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So so it goes on in verse 13 and the woman which hath a husband that believeth not. So it could be the opposite way. The woman could come to the truth, right? Before her man, her husband, her ish, right? The isha before the ish. That doesn't amen, that doesn't credit. And if he be pleased to dwell with her, although she's talking this thing that's kind of new to him, but he still love her, so forth and so on. What does it say? Let her not leave him. Notice. The order was a man will put away his wife, what we have in the Torah, what, what even Yeshua discusses, what Moses did because of the hardness of the people's hearts, you know, because they wasn't able to have that ability to put, put, put the wife away. Their hearts were so hard, you, could, you know, it would tear apart the community. You know what I mean? Yeah. You, you can imagine if people were forced 
to kind of stay together. You know what I mean? Sometimes people, you know, are not good to each other. So the man will put away his wife and the woman usually would leave, right? Let It said, let her make her not leave him. And here's come to your, your answer to your point. For the unbelieving husband, the husband that doesn't admit the truth, is sanctified. Get that word? Sanctified, right? Is sanctified, like set apart by the Isha, by the Eshet, the Oset, the woman, the wife. And the unbelieving wife, the woman that doesn't uh, mean or credit the truth, she is set apart, sanctified, made holy, in other words, by the Ish, by the husband. Else were your children unclean, but now are they holy. Now are they set apart. This is a deep verse right here. Because basically it's saying that what makes the children even holy, and, and this now tells us about a lot of things that many of us may have experienced and a lot of things that people are experiencing, what's going on in the world generally, to break down, separate to you know, the family, you know, the atomic family, the Adamic family, you know, separate, you know, the nuclear meltdown of the family structure. Because it's saying, it, if this is not the case, then your children would be unclean. You get what I'm saying? But now are they holy? Now are they set apart? So in the sense of, it doesn't mean that everyone has to believe to the same or credit to the same way. The husband may be stronger in his faith than the wife, but the wife loves him. She's pleased to live and dwell with him and vice versa, uh, right? Verse 15, just verse 15 right here. But if the unbelieving depart, whoever it is, Right. If the unbelieving is the one that doesn't credit, doesn't admit the truth, say, I, I can't deal with this. You're talking about Yeshua. You're talking about, you know, you know, the truth. You know, one can say Rastafari in that in the true sense. Right. Let him depart. A brother or a sister. Notice how the language, notice the language. 